little Waller I 3D printed. Forward fan of a uh, modern jet engine. Don't think it's anything specific, but hey, welcome back to the Sim Project. Um, last video regarding uh, the ultra wide versus the big screen TV. It's a pretty good hit. Um, it's like 16,000 views or something like that right now. Like lots of thumbs up, lots of good comments. A couple of people disagreed with me, but they didn't. I don't think they understood the concept of where we were going, you know, or where I was going with the whole idea. Um, those who did agree, well, clearly, you know, they, they showed that support. A lot of people supporting VR, and don't get me wrong, I think VR is really cool. I was playing with it uh, at Christmas time. Friends of ours were here, and they bought their son the the Medic Quest, I think it is, playing some gorilla climb game. It was pretty funny. Um, I think I, my wife shot some cell phone video, and if it's there, I'll throw it up here. I'll move my head sideways a little bit. We'll throw it up over here so you can you can see it. I smashed my hand off a table and hit the roof, you know, the ceiling, because of course I'm six foot four, so stretch up, it doesn't take much to touch the ceiling in the house. But hey, um, anyways, quick update on what's going on around here. Uh, life's been really busy, that's why I haven't really got much, you know, haven't done any, really anything much since that video there a couple months back. What I have done, and it's on behind me right here, you can see it, let me move to the sim. Um, I did upgrade the screen. In that uh, video, I was trying out just an old 40-inch HD TV we had kicking around. Um, and it, it looked really good. I was quite happy with it. Of course, the resolution did drop because I went from a, um, a 2K ultra-wide to a 1080 HD TV. So, of course, we did lose some. Well, hello, Black Friday sales. No, actually, sorry, this one was Christmas. The other thing's Black Friday. We'll talk about it in a second. Two weeks before Christmas, um, Best Buy. It's a uh, uh, Hisense, I guess we want to pronounce that. I'm not sure how you want to pronounce that. You know, just a generic brand. 43 inch, 4K. Eh, it's only 60 hertz recycle or 60 hertz refresh. I don't, whatever. 43 inch 4K, um, $299. Uh, that's Canadian, of course. The US sites, I think they were on sale for like $229 American. So come on, $229 for a 43 inch 4K TV that is just phenomenal, you can't go wrong. Now I have noticed, um, and you'll find out why, there's some limitations of that in a minute. The I've In Flight Sim, I'm running at 2K full screen. I'm not actually, I'm Windows is running in 4K, um, but when I go full screen for Flight Sim, it downgrades to 2K. Only because to get 4K quality with a good frame rate or maintain decent frame rates, I found I was having to cut the, uh, cut the effects back a lot. So I didn't see the sense of running 4K with reduced effects when I can run 2K with an increased in effects, right? You know, it looks better, you know, there's more stuff going on in 2K, sure, you can barely see a difference in the resolution. I did play with it at 1080 and wow, that, ooh, no, 2K, 2K is awesome. Uh, the other thing I did, the upgrade I did in the sim, um, I bought a new computer. So this was a Black Friday sale. You know, we got some fancy lights going on back there in the back. Uh, Black Friday sale at uh, Canada Computers up here. It's a pretty good computer chain. We've got, uh, they got 20 or 30 stores now across Canada. Most of them are in Ontario, Quebec, but they are moving west and uh, east with them. Um, 12th generation, i7, uh, 12700. It came with eight gig of memory. I upped it to 64. Uh, came with a one terabyte SSD and a two terabyte uh, platter. Good there, uh, no video card in it. So I put a, I put a 30, 3060 card in with 12 gigs of RAM. And yeah, I'm, you know what? I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, you know, 3060, you know, that's kind of a cheap and low end card. Compared to the old ATI 480 card I had, which is going back, I think uh, I looked it up. I think that was six years ago I bought that. This is a powerhouse compared to that. So yeah, drives this at 2K, you know, I pull 60 frames a second, no problem whatsoever. I actually downgraded to 30 frames a second, and I'll get into that later once we get into the build, you know, once we get build more, only because we're going to start looking at running probably five or six screens off this computer, you know, with your primary view up front. Um, I've got a G1000 I'm working on. Uh, fingers crossed, I should get that finished off tonight, and I'll be able to plug a little bit of blurb into that at the end of this video. But yeah, I got a G1000 coming. Um, I got the GTC. 570 over there I'm working on. That's another screen. Uh, there's another little treat I bought uh, for a, uh, that'll be that'll be the fourth screen. Um, similar to the size of a G3000, uh, but it's like a, it's like a, it's a Garmin 1570 or something. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, 
I'll, I'll throw a little link up here at the bottom. I'll throw, throw a picture up at the end, hopefully, when I get the G1000 working, you can see what I'm working on from there. But the big update right now, we are building stuff. Um, I'm not gonna show you too much around in the room up here because I've got all kinds of stuff up here because I am working on the basement downstairs to get ready to build the big sim. Um, we're studded down there, insulated, electrical's done. I ran like almost 300 feet of Cat6 network cable around, so I had lots of hardline drops to hardline all the computers. I built myself a nice little network closet up here. I'll show that in the next video I make. It's still not quite together 100% and I don't need people, you know, saying, well, I'll clean up your mess. Well, it's not done yet. Um, but yeah, so what do we got going on right now? We have a glare shield. So let me uh, lock this camera down and I will throw up a screen recording so you see what I'm looking at. Okay, shut the window blind there because the sun was uh, reflecting off my head. Um, anyway, so glare shield, what do we got? Well, we have, and uh, this is it in Cura, my slicing software for my 3D printer. Um, it's uh, 16 pieces, well 17 actually, because what it's got down here, and I'll scroll in so we can see it, it's got this little short um, pentagonal shaped uh, dowel pin they use to hold each piece together with, because it is, like I say, it's 16 pieces across. It was uh, founded on printables, was created by somebody that said they had a relatively small printer, like a 180 um, square, or 180 millimeter square. Uh, my Ender 3 is 230, so there's lots of room to print this on that, of course. See, all you do if you know anything about uh, 3D printers, and it's a 3MF file, so you just grab the piece you want, move it over to your bed, arrange it, and you're good to go. So, um, <laughs> boy, did it take a while, though. I've only printed the front side of it, and uh, you're looking for this angle, you may notice you recognize it if you know your GA, GA aircraft at all. Um, it's supposedly a one-to-one -one scale glare shield from a TBM. Now, ironically, uh, my, we'll call it jack of all trades, glass cockpit uh, um, GA little panel I'm putting together here. Um, it's going to look a lot like a TBM. Uh, I don't fly a TBM, ironically. Um, you know, it's interesting. I should, uh, maybe I'll talk to... Um, my buddy Mark about uh, painting one up to match our VA colors. But yeah, so there it is there. Um, the goal, as you can see, and I don't know if, how well I can zoom in to show you this. You can see the screw holes. Oops. You see the screw holes right there all along it, the big ones. Um, the idea is you screw, you take the, you build the one side, you screw it through your uh, um, your main instrument panel, chunk of wood. Uh, you know, I've got a, I think I've got a three quarter inch piece or five eighths piece of uh, MDF. Um, that's way too thick. I'm going to scale it back. Probably you use half inch or something, maybe a little smaller. But yeah, so you would mount this on the front side. Um, and then the rear side you print, there's, you know, those holes go right on through. And you bolt the back side together across the top. You make it nice and neat. Right, You can barely see the seam here. And I'm trying to get this thing spun around. It's not cooperating a lot. But you can see that little bit of the seam right in through here where the, the two pieces, uh, the, all the pieces ma match up. Um, the idea is they'll be pulled apart, you know, that half inch from your MDF for your main instrument panel. And uh, you sand it down nice and smooth, match the contours. And the guy that actually built it, I'll see if I can dig up uh, pictures off the Discord channel I found him on. Um, he wrapped his in like a faux leather uh, vinyl with a little bit of padding behind it, clean up. It looks, you know, less the the red stitching that TBM does across the uh, the front here where they roll it over and stitch the material together. It looks like the real thing out of the aircraft. It, he did it. It's an amazing job. Um, what I have found with some of it, what well, as I was doing it, um, each model, because you want to adjust your your Z point where it, it starts and stops as it rises on the Z axis, you got to make sure it's at a back corner. You'll you know, end up with a funny seam down the middle. You got to make sure you file that off good and clean. There was a couple pieces I didn't file very well, put them together. And something else I did notice with these dowels, uh, the dowels are almost like a perfect fit for the holes. I went and I downsized that dowel by about 10% just to make them fit a little better. But it was something I put it together and realized, okay, it needs to be sanded a little bit and I couldn't pull it back apart. I tried pulling it apart and I actually broke, there's five dowels in each piece. I broke like two dowels, pulled it apart. So I cleaned that one up, drilled the holes through uh, to clean the broken plastic out, printed a, few, a couple more of those things. I think you need, uh, I think I ended up printing like 35 or 36 of them in total, something like that. Um, well, each piece uses five, so it's multiple five. So let's call it 35 pieces so far um, of those little dowels to put together. And yeah, so it, it looks really good. Um, I'm going to wrap it because there are some spots where, you know, it's just the way it's printed in different, um, 
different heating, different material types. Um, Cause I did use, I think I've used through three rolls of filament so far. I, they weren't all about the same time, so they're probably different batches. So a slightly different color, coloring in the black and, and things like that. So I'll probably do the same thing. I'll go to a, a fabric store or just look on Amazon. And surely I can find a, a chunk of vinyl or something with a little bit of that white um, cushion padding behind it to wrap around it and seal it up, make it look good. Uh, it does take a long time to print, I will uh, tell you. Um, this piece is on the end. Let me just pull it on. Oh, I can't pull that out with that. Let me change settings here. So uh, we'll just grab that out of there and I'll show you. Whoops. Oh man, I screwed up. That's the wrong one. That's size adjustment. Anyways, but yeah, there it is. Something like that. That piece took, and now of course I've undersized it because uh, I moved it. Let's grab the opposite on the other side. There you go. So something like that. Um, that took about six and a half, seven hours to print on the Ender 3. I did increase the layer height. Um, most of the stuff I print is between point, or sorry, between point one two and 0.2 millimeters for a layer height. I bumped these up to 0.4 just to speed it up. I uh, dropped the infill down to like, uh, I think I used like a 20% infill. I did, however, because I printed one and didn't look very good. I left the uh, the number of times it makes each wall, like wall thickness. I left it at three, or sorry, four. Uh, I tried one at two and you could actually see the crisscross of the infill through it because it, it just wasn't holding together nice enough. So I popped it up to a four. So about, in about six to eight hours to do that piece. The bigger pieces like these guys up top, um, and I went the wrong way with that one too. There we go like that. Um, those were like 11, 12 hours each to print. So needless to say, the eight pieces on the front, I've got probably, there's four, almost four days of solid printing on the printer to print those eight pieces. And I still gotta print the pieces on the back. And the pieces on the back, as you can see, they are a little bigger. They're a lot bigger actually. So. So yeah, so a bunch more printing doing that, but I printed the front eight first so I could lay it out. And uh, I got a secret to show you. Let me show you what those pieces look like. So I had to come into the TV room because this thing's too big to put it anywhere and hold on to it. I'll try and hook the camera somewhere so I can show it to you, but there it is. I'm gonna stand up and get away from it so you can get a look at it. You know, it's kind of hard to get a good grasp of it because of course it's not on the glare sheet or anything like that. As you can see, most seams went together. This is where I did have the problem where I didn't sand it quite well, right in the middle. Um, but yeah, so there's the holes to drill it, bore it all the way through to hold it. And uh, and we talk about making sure your Z off, your, your Z line is in the right spot. As you can see that one, that's where I had a bit of a boo boo. And if you look close, you can see the uh, zigzag of the infill. That's because that one's only got uh, a two uh, layer wall thickness where all the other ones, that's all four wall. Had a couple of them where the printer, yeah, you can't see it. There's a couple of them where the printer had a little, little hiccup or something, and I almost hiccuped myself there, and kind of lost its position. But other than that, you know, like I say, I'm going to cover it with something. So I am incredibly happy. I don't know if I put it up against the wall, you can get a better idea of what it looks like. There we go. So yeah, nice curves. It is incredible. I can't remember off the top of my head who designed it. I'll, uh, you know, like I said, I'll put the link to it on printables right here. Um, man, you did a phenomenal job in this thing. This is this is looking great. Uh, I, guess I printed one piece for the rear so far. I'm not really overly concerned about that right at this moment because, like I said, I got I got main instrument panel stuff to do. And uh, yeah, so that's about it for this video. Appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by, checking out the Sim Project. Uh, like I say, fingers crossed, maybe I can throw a little teaser in of what that G1000 looks like. Until next time, see you later.